When I was champion, I was on that side of it. On the right side. Well, welcome back to Wembley Stadium. It feels fantastic to walk outside there and realise that on April 29th we're going to have the biggest boxing event Britain has ever seen at the Wembley Stadium for the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World between Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. There's so many people to thank and we'll go into that uh, further later on in the press conference and right now I'm going to pass over to our exclusive broadcast partner for the UK uh, who's going to have questions for everybody on the table, that's Adam Smith. Thanks, Eddie. It really is a super, super fight. It's fantastic to be back here at Wembley Stadium. What better stage in Britain at the end of April 2017 to get Vladimir Klitschko and Anthony Joshua into a ring. I think it's wonderfully exciting, not just for British boxing, but for sport worldwide. I'm going to ask a few questions. Uh, I'm going to kick off with, with Anthony. And we're going to go right straight into it. Do you believe that you can, on April the 29th, knock out Vladimir Klitschko and move up in levels and cement your place as a, as a real heavyweight champion? Yeah, uh, well, knockout is the you know, cherry on top, but to win, <coughs> whichever way, I think it's very possible. And um, this is a fight that can change uh, from champion to legend overnight, right? Uh, it's a fight that will get the masses out and draw massive attention and other types of fights that can change uh, the uh, That's the type of fight that can change the way people view in your industry. So as like I said, right now I'm ideal for the champion of the world, but now it's about beating the right people to go down in history. But it's not doing it once, it's doing it over and over again. So this is just the start of that legendary campaign. And Vladimir, straight to you, do you believe that you could in some way expose Anthony Joshua on April the 29th as a fighter that's not nearly ready for your level of experience and seasoning? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, first of all. I'm really glad to have you here at this stadium. <coughs> the stadium is famous worldwide, and now Anthony and I will have a chance to perform here on April 29th, and I will describe probably in five steps, you know, my dream and what I feel. It's like in the same way, like a boxer cannot punch with one finger. Even with two, he's not strong enough. We have five, so we have five steps. 
and if it would be five steps together, it would make a fist that can punch through anything in life. So, in the first step, my goal and target to become three time world champion. I've been holding myself back for a year and a half, which was the first time in my entire 26 year career. And I look forward to be back in the ring at the set to become three time world champion. Second, <coughs> with the second step, all as the consequences. So, what is going to happen if, if Anthony will win this fight? I will congratulate you. And I will congratulate you. When I will win this fight? I will help you to come back. In the third step, Obviously, I need to have somebody that's going to help me to get myself in the perfect shape. So I will have sparring partners, my direct competitors that want to knock me out in the ring during the sparring sessions. And we're probably going to look for the same guy because I like, or Anthony like me, same size, same arm length, all the same, different colors, but the rest is the same. So those sparring partners will definitely help me to get in the back shape. In the fourth step, you know, I imagine standing in the middle of this stadium, holding those belts in my hands, to all the fans, we're talking about 80, 90,000, who knows, maybe, you know, somebody gonna get in, standing there, we gonna get it to 100,000. So, I've been fighting the stadium where, I'm sorry, an arena where it was 1999, Axel Schultz, German hero. I was walking in in the arena with 18,000 sold out Köln Arena. I was booed until the fifth round, but I was cheered up when I was holding my European title in my hands. So, I imagine, I have imagination in my hat and a dream to hold those backs, uh, to hold those <coughs> belts in my hands. And fifth and the final step, which is very important to me, five steps. I'm obsessed with my first step, with my goal, to become champion of the game. Thanks. You say you're obsessed. Is that because of the performance against Tyson Fury? What went wrong that night? And as you said, you've had time out. It'll be a year and a half before you get back into the ring. What makes you believe that you can perform again <coughs> at that level and regain those world heavyweight titles? I would say this set back for a year and a half. By the time I'll be standing in the ring here, um, I'll be 41. So a year and a half break, is it good? Is it bad? I feel it's good. And I feel that my so far last performance was not good. I was not holding as usually, like in the past whatever years and a half, my hands up after the fight. And I will tell you my motivation is as high as the sky. If that would be different, probably my motivation wouldn't be as good. But you know what, now I've got, I have to wake up, you know, it was just a wake up call before the big match, because the, before this big event, and the extravagance event, and I would remember right now, words of Emmanuel Stewart, he always said to me, Vladimir, your signature fights are going to come up, we don't know when it's going to happen, but this man was so right, this is definitely a signature fight for Anthony, and I told myself. So I look forward. Anthony, there's always been a lot of respect between the pair of you. I know you've worked in, in Vladimir's camp, and Vladimir said you're like the, the heir apparent. What makes you believe that the time <coughs> is right for you after your 18 knockout wins and a, a different sort of experience getting to this stage? You feel the time is right. I think mean, it's all about winning. At the end of the day, it's another fight. You asked me after the fight how I felt about it taking on Klitschko at Wembley and I was like, it doesn't matter where it is, we can fight in here, we can fight there. But when I look back on it 
and uh, calm down his history. It's an amazing opportunity. <coughs> and uh, the time is now, it's an opportunity that presented itself. And I'll be silly not to jump at the opportunity to fight Fitch because it's a man that I need to defeat, as I said, to kind of start building my reputation and respecting the division. Um, and when you listen to me, I've always been honest about how I perform and how I conduct myself and how uh, I've navigated through my career. So, 18 months ago, well, when I first time fight, I was questioned after my second pro fight. When are you going to fight him? When are you going to fight him? Again? <coughs> give me two years. Give me, give me two and a half years. Then a year ago, they asked me the same question. Give me another year. And right now, we're at a stage where a year ago, we're in the present. So, I've always said it to myself. And everything I say to myself kind of comes into reality. So that's what makes the time right, because I predicted this time 18 months ago. Hey, Tyson Fury shot the world, obviously out in Germany by beating Vladimir. Does that give you uh, a game plan? Does that give you tactics? Or have you got to do your own thing alongside Ronald McCracken? Yeah, most definitely. No game plan from Tyson Fury. No, uh, I can't really take away anything from watching Klitschko perform that night. Um, each fight is different, each performance is different. And as, as I, when I listen to what Kishore is saying, he's, uh, he's very motivated and, is, uh, and obsessed with uh, performing better than he did in his last fight. Um, so if I can defeat that Kishore that comes April 29th, we'll show how great of a champion I'm going to be. So I just got to take a positive from it, no problem. And we'll come together and we'll a great show. Vladimir Anthony had Robert McCracken in the corner for the first time. Uh, as you saw on uh, on Saturday in Manchester, you've had the great Emmanuel Stewart, you've had Jonathan Banks, I know your, your brother Vitaly's helped you. What's the what's the team for this one? Because it's such a big moment for you. Who's behind you? The same people that you've seen in the past, so nothing's going to be changed. The same team, the right team? Are you calling it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the same right team as it was in the past. And you've been preparing in the same way in Austria, in your camp? Um, I'll be doing and relying my preparation on uh, experience that I gain in the ring. And I'm an expert on how to prepare and get myself ready. So I will prepare accordingly. What, what have you learned from being with Anthony Joshua, both in camp, seeing his development, being at ringside watching him on Saturday that makes you believe that you will? again become world heavyweight champion in front of these 90,000 people here at Wembley? I was, I am, and I will be very complimentary again. First time I saw him perform here in London, 2012, when he became Olympic champion. So I felt this man is following into my footsteps in a certain way. I've been fighting Olympic champions in the past as um, Ovetkin and Reversen. I, whatever the uh, <coughs> of the fight is said, I, I truly believe that he is one of the best heavyweights right now. No disrespect to uh, another champion, as Parker recently became double belt champion and. Uh, uh, Wilder, Deontay Wilder, and WBC, but I think Anthony is absolutely outstanding at it. And, uh, and it's great that they actually eventually we meet. I really think that, um, unfortunately, I will remember this name once again, Emmanuel Stewart, and I told you, um, Anthony, unfortunately, Emmanuel couldn't see you, and I was, and I, was uh, and I know he would have been very impressed, and he would love to, you know, you should go. So, and I remember Anthony was just, I had Olympic champions in the camp as well, and then the world champions, and so they're always in certain ways self-promoting and showing off, but Anthony was always, he was always respectful, and he was, you know, sitting by the side and just watching observe. observe. So this quality that, that probably uh, a lot of people can take as uh, an advice. For me, even in behavior is exactly from Anthony. So very backed off and very, very calm and learning. So asking a lot of questions <coughs> and, and learning. So he's still learning. And this process will take a long time. And you, you know, as long as you live, you learn. And better not, never stop learning. So I definitely see difference in, um, 
the way he box as it was two years ago, and he has his uh, past fights. So he's getting the self-confidence. He trains. I see how he trains. He trains with modern technologies. Whatever is out there from different uh, sport arts, he's um, implementing into his uh, workouts. So he's definitely using it for his advantage. And the results are, you know, to see, he's 27. Yeah. 27, and he's a world champion, Olympic champion, undefeated, 18 fights, 18 knockouts. I mean, how could I not be impressed with that? And with our friends, you know, in a certain way. I, I did call him little bro. But even with my bro, when we're in the ring, we're very competitive. Or when we used to be in the ring, we're very competitive. And I'm sure that, you know, for that night, there were friends in the ring on 29th April. So we definitely will perform, I'm sorry for speaking for you, but we will prepare, perform for from our best, bring the ring. You've been a professional for a couple of decades, almost 70 fights. You've, you've fought all around the world, many of them world championships. You've been to London once before, uh, when you, and you beat Monty Barrett on the Lance Lewis card. What would it mean to be here at Wembley, in the national stadium, 90,000 people? You compare it to those nights in Germany that you've had. What would be special about being here next year in England for you? It is special. It is special to perform here. I'm uh, not in my home, so to say. Um, I'm not in Ukraine, in Germany, or even in the States. So it's, it's, it's a different audience on one hand. On the other hand, it's familiar to me because I've, I've been performing here. And uh, this is not the first fight that Italo or I had um, from this country. as Herbie Hyde uh, or um, David Hay. Uh, and, and Chisor and others. So I, I feel kind of connected and familiar with the audience and uh, it's definitely something familiar on one hand to fight at the stadium. I've been fighting uh, from the biggest stadium was a Shaki with 61,000. Um, I've never fought at 90,000 stadium. <coughs> this is mecca of sport, the stadium. And, um, and don't forget about it, boxing came from England, the, the roots of the sport. So I think I'm arriving at home, in certain way, even if I'm not at home. Um, I definitely feel, feel great about it that I have this opportunity um, to have a signature fight. And uh, even if you know we mentioned it previously with my age, I do consider it as a number. If there weren't that many people when you were, when you were fighting, but you had the experience of it, when the 90,000, is this the sort of stage you've always wanted to perform on and, and showcase your talent? It's a stage you can't dream of. It's a stage that you can't really put into your wildest imagination, but you'll never know. Um, that's what they say hard work can pay off, and uh, we've been due diligent in the gym and training and preparation and strategy outside of the ring. That's what I see. Um, and it's not real until we step into the ring, right? So I have to just put, put my head down, say my prayers, and just hope that we can make this to you. There's a great deal of respect between the two, which is which is which is which is wonderful to see. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's good to see. But when you get into that ring on April the 29th, yeah. that, that that changes. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, utmost respect for for um, Not just from achievements, that's one thing. But as you said, the, the man that he is. Um, like we had like Lennox, and, and now we've got the Kitchener brothers. And then when I was coming through, you have. A blueprint to follow, right? So these these pictures and then it's the type of people that I looked I looked to and took inspiration from. And uh, it's even like my brother that we're on the corner. When when we when we're together we have the best time. We have a great time, but if he owes me ten pounds, if we're playing in FIFA, I'm hounding him down until I win or I get so it's just how it goes, right? It's just how it goes. Competition. Um, and that, like we saw with Trezor and did it on the weekend, they shook hands after. So we, we, we come together, um, the lions roar, and then at the end of it you shake hands and uh, life goes on. But uh, as I always say with my fights, uh, the best man will win. And destiny's already been written for that fight. Uh, it's just fulfilling, fulfilling our goals. It's the drive yeah. inside you, the competition, that's yeah. the hunger that's burning, mm -hmm. that, that wants to make you victorious in this sport time and again. Yeah, it's, it's more, it's not just a sport, as I said with my, my guys over there. It's just life in general, um, wanting the best out of every situation, So and that reflects in the sport. So yeah, when it comes down to April 29th, how I conduct myself now, 
deep into 20, April 29th. Even while I'm not in intense training, just my mindset. Like, we're back on the grind straight away. So that's a winning mentality. And then uh, that's what's helped me see. That's what's helped got me through life in, in the first place and made the opportunity out of nothing. So yeah, that, that will definitely put me in a good way uh, come the fight time. Vladimir and Vitaly, who, who have ruled for so long as heavyweight champions, they, they speak so many languages, they're, they're nice guys out of the ring. Uh, do you want to take that sort of role model um, process on with you? You know, we, we see the kids here looking around Wembley today, and it, that side of it's important, isn't it? Yeah, I tried to learn Spanish and stopped after four lessons, so I've tried, <laughs> tried learning a different language, it's not easy. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely like to take inspiration from Vladimir. Um, most definitely, as a, as a man, as I said, boxing is one thing, but as a man, good man, definitely a good man. Um, his brother's doing great things for his country as well. And uh, when it's all said and done, when we're not here, that's all you have is what you've done with people. So, yeah, um, outside of boxing, I'll definitely take inspiration, but in the ring, I have to be my own man. So, talk me through the next few months of uh, preparation yeah. for April the 29th. Anything different, or is it? You've always talked about a journey yeah. and the fact that you're not just preparing for one person in particular, it's preparing for the ultimate. Yeah, so preparation, it starts now, in a certain sense, as I said, mentality. Um, and it's a brilliant thing that we're here today because it keeps me in the zone. The great thing about the last camp is that I can take what I built into my next camp. I'm not going to go back down to zero. Maintain, probably in fact, keep strong in certain areas. So when I attack training camp, we're ahead of the game. And as, as Vladimir said, we've got so much science and data now. That's why I can track and improve each fight because of the, the, the information I've built over my over his training camp. And, and that's how I've already started training because we've been on the phone, we're having a debrief today and plan for the next couple of months. And what will you need to improve on for April the 29th, the fact that obviously you haven't gone 12 rounds yet, that there's little things that you'll, yeah. you'll yeah. maybe gut checks that you may have to go through here. Is, is that something you can prepare for? Is that something you have to react to on the night? React to on the night, because I've never been there before. In, in sparring is completely different to a fight, so I can't really ever say to you, yeah, I've done 12 rounds in a fight. I do it in the gym for very often, but <clears throat> uh, fighting's completely different. But how I can prepare differently for this fight, I would say, Physically, I always train to my best capability, and um, so I probably sound and step up my game mentally. I know you don't like predictions, especially against a guy you like, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What happens April the 29th? Um, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to prepare for a 12 round fight because, like, this is all experiences and learning. I've said to myself before, yeah, I'm going to blow him up in two rounds. Two rounds, I'm going to blow him up in three rounds, and I'm there seven rounds later, and that's that's boxing. So. As I said, mentally, I'm going to be smart and say to myself, I'm going to prepare for a 12 round fight. And, uh, that's how I'll attack training camp. So that'll help me get stronger. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to run 45 minutes. I'm going to run 50 minutes. Because I know I'm going 12 rounds. So if I know I'm going two rounds, I might run 30 minutes. So I'm going to prepare for a 12 round fight. Vladimir, former Olympic champion, so many successes throughout your long career. We remember the, the David Hay one well, of course, from a British point of view. How important is April the 29th as a night for you in your sporting life? How many of April 29th I could have? So I'm pretty much limited or more limited than Anthony. So Anthony's 27, I'll be 41. So how many 29th of April I'm gonna have? Uh, to perform, not for many, but just to be able to perform. So it's everything to me. And uh, I understand the importance of that, but it doesn't make me go crazy, you know. Um, I will remain calm before the storm comes. And uh, it's definitely a very special date, a very special event, a very special point, and a very special arena. And you believe you will become a three-time champion and regain your belts on this stage? You don't, you're not listening to me. <laughs> I'm obsessed with <laughs> that. Final thing I want to ask you. Don't take it personally. No, well, I'm not taking it personally. <laughs> Final thing I want to ask you, Vladimir. What has Vitaly said about all this? How excited is he? Or does he think you're mad? Well, Vitaly just uh, became uh, WBC uh, 
lifelong champion of the title. So he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like yeah, he, he doesn't need to be challenged. So uh, he has it. Um, I, he, he knows that his uh, little bro loves challenges and uh, he is uh, very excited about it. He looks forward to this fight and uh, this match. And uh, even if he's busy with his job as, as a mayor, he'll be here on the 29th of April and uh, supporting the event, the fight, fans, and television broadcasters that are going to broadcast around the world. So I just want to say, I don't know how many questions you can ask me, but I just want to say that um, it's an amazing thing on, on the first thing that two fighters are not actually saying to each other. What am I going to do with you? You know, and all they show the throwing tables and, you know, punching each other in the face before the fight. <coughs> so we've seen that. This is a different stage and a different level on a lot of occasions. From the stadium to the worldwide view and broadcasting, as I mentioned before. And I think you know, this is about an out of my age, and I've been in the sports long, uh, long enough. We're so able in this fight. I would say it's a 50 50. Our size, our strength, whatever the youth and age, as I said, it's just a number, could go any direction. So we have a competitive fight, a fight with two athletes involved that have pretty much the same qualities. Both Olympic champions. Both, um, one was a champion for a long time, another one is, is a champion. So I think on different levels, it's a very special event. And I don't know when next time such fight could happen in the heavyweight division. So I'm super excited about it. You probably feel it. Uh, I'm on fire. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that I have this chance to fight <coughs> and how many of those tables do I have uh, as, uh, on my side, you know, as an athlete, I don't know. But I look forward to it and I'm very, very excited about it. You should do it too. Be excited about it. We certainly feel that energy. Let's bring your manager in, uh, Bert Vonte. Bert, great to see you uh, again. Um, obviously, he, he wants it so much. He's obsessed. Are you? Absolutely. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> No doubt. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, this is, uh, first of all, I have to thank Eddie and then also uh, Anthony's uh, team for very, very constructive and professional negotiations for the last couple of weeks. Eddie is an absolute professional. He's not one of these uh, big talkers like other uh, uh, promoters. He performs. And uh, this was, uh, was a really, really, really very good negotiation and we both teams want it. This is the stage to be. This is probably the most famous stadium in the world. I have very good experiences here. I was in your job here in 1995, uh, uh, also as uh, the, the executive for uh, Premier TV, nowadays Sky in Germany, and was uh, the commentator for the fight between Oliver McCall and Frank Bruno, which was a great night here in, in, <coughs> in Wembley. And, uh, um, but at that time, I think we had around 30,000 people. Now we will probably have 80, 90,000 people and a completely modernized, uh, fantastic uh, stadium. And, and we're really looking forward to this event. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It can't be better. How frustrating a year has it been, the on-off, obviously, fights with Tyson Fury, the, the disappointment of what happened uh, to Vladimir losing. How have you guys rebuilt? How have you, have you come to terms with that? I mean, that's uh, more or less a question to Vladimir, and uh, it's also a question to, to our team at, at Digital Management and K2. I mean, it was very disappointing because Vladimir was ready uh, and, and trained twice uh, for fights, and, and each time it was cancelled by, by Team Fury. Yeah, and that was very disappointing because I think I, I don't do <coughs> anything for Fury, I don't care about this guy. Uh, but but uh, I felt very sorry for Vladimir, who was in camp, trained for weeks. And then always the guy who probably knew weeks before that he will never fight, let him fight, and then pull the plug. You know, and and, and that's uh, that was very very disappointing. But I mean, we won't look back. It's now for this fight, and and uh, this is uh, a different promoter. Luckily, 
and uh, uh, a different team on the opposite side, and I'm sure we, we have uh, very, very good cooperation and looking forward to fantastic events. And finally, what about the, the respect between the pair, which is it's refreshing, isn't it, to see, as you said, two Olympic champions, world champions, and, and, and role models, ambassadors for the sport. I mean, it's so important for this sport, yeah? 100%. I mean, we don't want to see what, uh, what happened uh, at the press conference uh, last week. Uh, nobody needs that. I mean, we need role models. Sport. We want kids to, to train and box, you know. And, and this is what, what, uh, what's not good for our sport, that you have uh, all, I mean, you guys, uh, I was a long time on the other side, uh, we like uh, things like that happening <coughs> because uh, this is something to, to write about, broadcast about, it's funny, but in the end for the sport and for the athletes, not good, not at all. You know, those things normally don't happen in soccer, in tennis, in other sports, it happens in boxing, and, and that's, that's absolutely not good. And here, I mean, it's not necessary because everybody, if we hear on the dice, uh, 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 the journalist, everybody knows that this is the fight. I mean, this is two top athletes, two super uh, 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 heavyweight Olympic champions uh, performing on a, on a top level. It's a 50 50 fight, as Vladimir said before, I, I think the same. And this is a promoter's dream come true. Thanks, Bert. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Adam. Um, just to finally finish on some details about tickets. Um, we're going to be having the uh, first 85,000 tickets available, um, some through coach packages as well. They'll start on Friday, uh, this Friday, to Club Wembley customers, and also release uh, next week, and from the week commencing January the 16th, there'll be a further release of around 40,000 tickets. Um, we're already in discussions with the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, who's been very helpful to allow us to get to the 90,000 number. I spoke to his office yesterday and we'll be making sure we achieve that number, I'm sure. Um, and from our side, we want to thank everybody for just a huge event. I was on the phone with Anthony Joshua this morning, and we were talking about the last 12 months. It's been an incredible 12 months. It was last December when he boxed Dillian White for the British title on a fantastic night at the O2 Arena. He took the gamble to fight Charles Martin on April the 9th at the O2 Arena for the world title, has defended it twice, and has become a huge global star around the world. <laughs> And it's been a very, very rewarding 12 months. And we always talk about the phases of his career. Well, phase two has just ended at the weekend. We go into phase three now. We go into the legacy phase. The phase where you'd be remembered for being a true champion, for performing on nights at the National Stadium in front of 90,000 people against legends of the division like Vladimir Klitschko. And to echo what Bern said, and, and thank you, Bern, for everything in this negotiation. It's been a joy to work with you and your team. Vladimir Klitschko, He's a great role model ambassador, but let me tell you what he is. He is one driven individual. And to listen to him talk and to see the determination in his eyes tells me that this is one hell of a tough fight for Anthony Joshua. I'm keeping my options open. I haven't got around to you yet. <laughs> Um, and we'll promote the sport. I think, I, think I, I like what Bert said you know, on the big scale. It's, it's great for the sport because the world is crazy anyway, right now. And it's good to have something like that instead of just go nuts and do something. And coming over to you, <laughs> your story is inspirational, and I can't wait for you to go out there and perform in front of these people and the start of all these big fights. I'm so excited. And I can't wait for April 29th to come around. So we're going to have some photos up here now um, between you guys. And then we're going to go out on the pitch side as well. For, and when you walk out there and you look around, just imagine this place on April 29th. Trust me, it's going to be a very, very special night and the biggest night in British boxing history. Thank you. Photos up.